Hi, hello again, my name is Mr. Anger, and I'm going to walk you through a lesson in the physical science pace 1112. Uh, if you feel intimidated by this pace, don't feel bad. Uh, a lot of students who go through this pace um, really feel challenged. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the types of equations. I'm going to clarify one of the confusing points about types of equations and then talk about balancing equations because you have to do that for a few problems in this section. It'll be helpful if you have already read up through page 16 and have maybe tried to answer several of the questions and we will try to clarify for you some of these types and at the same time talk about balancing equations. The PACE talks about three major types of reactions. First we have synthesis, <clears throat> that's where two things are coming together and forming one new thing. Decomposition, where one chemical compound is breaking down to the two things that made it up initially. And then in substitution, there's one thing taking the place, uh, and actually I did this backwards, I need to be careful here. All right, this would actually be a C, plus B, there we go. So what's happening here is A is coming over here and taking the place of B, and B is being ejected and is off on its own. So something is being replaced. This is called a single replacement. The PACE also talks about double replacement. These are both types of substitution. In double replacement, the first element here is switching with the first element in the other one. And so we end up with A, D plus B, combining with C, all right? <clears throat> Let's go through a couple examples. And I want to first um, talk about balancing this equation right here. When you think about um, algebra, we know that the two sides of an equation have to be balanced. So whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the same thing to the other side. In chemistry, we have to do something similar. We have to have the same number of hydrogen atoms going into the reaction as we'll have coming out. And oh look, cool. I have two hydrogens going in and I have two hydrogens coming out. So far, so good. Now let's look at the oxygen. Oxygen is always, just like hydrogen and several other gases, called a diatomic molecule. In other words, Oxygen is never found in nature just one atom by itself. It's always two oxygen atoms bonded together, all right? They're kind of like twins, and they hang together like twins would. So I have two oxygen here, and I've got a problem. I've only got one oxygen over here. So you might be tempted to say, I know how I'll fix that. I'll put a two down here as a subscript. But we can't do that, because as you saw in the previous lesson about forming compounds, it depends on the charge of the positive ion, the charge of the negative, how they share or how they are um, giving up and gaining electrons. And so we can't just willy-nilly change subscripts. We happen to know that hydrogen plus oxygen forms water, H2O. If you ever want to see a really fascinating video about this, do a Google search on YouTube for uh, the space shuttles, the Challenger and things like that, when they take off, they have a huge tank of just oxygen and a huge tank of hydrogen. And when those two come together, it's a violent reaction that produces a lot of pressure. And that's what forces it to go up in the air. And the byproduct is water. So we can't change the formula of water. What I can do, though, is change the numbers out front. So because I know I need two oxygens over here, I'm going to put a two out front. Now I have two oxygen here, two oxygen here, oxygen's happy, and now hydrogen is not happy. Because here I have two times two, so four hydrogens total, and over here I only have two. But I can quickly and easily change that by putting a two in front. And now let's just check it again real quick. Four hydrogen, four hydrogen. Two oxygen, two times the one, two oxygen. And so this equation is now balanced. In order to be balanced, every element <clears throat> has to have the same number of atoms 
on both sides. Let's do that here with the decomposition of aluminum oxide. When aluminum oxide breaks down, we know that it forms aluminum, okay? And we know that it forms, there's that twin oxygen, just O2. So I look at this and I think, oh, okay, the easy thing to do would, uh, I need two, two aluminum here. Let me just put a two out front here. <clears throat> but then I look at it a little more closely and realize, okay, the problem is going to be trying to get oxygen to balance because I've got three here and two here. If I put a two out front, that'll give me four. And if I put a two out here, it's six. Oh, oh. What if I do that? What if I put a two out here, and you see there is a little bit of guesswork and trying, you know, playing around with this to get it. Now distribute that. That gives me a total of six oxygen, and I can take this twin O2, put a three in front, and now I have six oxygen. And now let's go back and balance the aluminum. Aluminum, Al2, but I have two of these molecules, so a total of four aluminum. And so all I need to do is put a four in front of aluminum there, and now that equation is also balanced. Let's look at this one down here. <clears throat> H2CO3. Now when that breaks down, this is actually uh, bicarbonate. When this breaks down, we have water and carbon dioxide, which is given off as a gas. Well, let's see if we can balance this. Look at the carbon. Hey, the carbon's already balanced. Yay. Let's look at the uh, oxygen. One, two, three here. I have two here plus this one, which is three. Wow, I want to roll. The oxygen is already balanced. The hydrogen is already balanced, and the carbon's balanced. So that equation does not need to have anything changed. It's already in balanced form. Let's look over here at this substitution equation. Chlorine being added to sodium bromine, bromide. And what's going to happen is the chlorine is going to take the place of the bromine, and the bromine is going to be put out. Well, let's see if we can balance this equation. Again, chlorine and bromine are both twins, diatomic molecules. Let's start with the bromine. I know I need two here, so I'm going to put a two out front here. That changes this to also be two sodium. And so now I can put a two in front of this. Now I've got two sodium, two sodium, two bromine, and two bromine. Let's see what happened to the chlorine. Two chlorine, and over here I have two chlorine. Yay, now we're balanced. Let's talk about this very special double replacement and see what's going to happen here. KOH plus HCl. This is um, potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. You'll learn later that acids can usually be identified by an H in the front of the formula. For instance, this over here is an acid. This is not an acid, it's just water. But when an acid and what's called a base come together, this is a very special type of double replacement. This is called a neutralization. When an acid and a base join together, especially if it happens in exactly the right quantities, then the total amount of acid gets neutralized by the base. And what forms is, well, let's see here. I'm going to put the K and the Cl together plus, so here's the K, here's the Cl, and then notice we have OH and H, and if I put those two together, I have H2O. Oh! This is called a salt. Remember when we talked in an earlier lesson about sodium chloride? Right here, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is table salt. Potassium chloride is another type of salt. And of course, H2O is water. And so whenever we put an acid and a base together, or I should say often, we put an acid and a base together, what forms is a salt and water. But the reason it's called a double substitution, and I want you to see this, is the potassium changes place with the hydrogen, and then the hydroxide 
Um, changes place there, so we have potassium bonding with the chlorine, all right? And then the two from here bond together and form the water. That's a double replacement. In the pace, it seems a little confusing, but look at the big picture of what we have. Three main types, substitution, decomposition, and synthesis. Under substitution, we have two main types, single substitution and double substitution. And then we have a very special type of double substitution called neutralization. And if you notice, when you're doing a matching section, uh, maybe on the homework or a checkup or a self-test, if you notice that you have water formed as one of the products and it looks like a double substitution, look to see if the other one's a salt. It probably is. And if you have an option available for neutralization, that's probably the specific example that they're trying to get you to identify. But it is a type of double substitution, which is a type of the substitution problem. So I hope that by showing you some of these examples of balancing equations, you feel a little more confident. Let's take a look at your pace um, and specifically the there is a balancing equation that is a challenge, all right? I'm on page J, number 27. J27, and if you can turn there, I'm going to write that one on the board. And then let's talk about it. Now it says just for fun. Don't you like that when they say just for fun? But that doesn't mean you can skip it, all right? <laughs> First off, what type of reaction does this look like? Well, what I see right away is here's aluminum combining with Cl2, aluminum chloride. Here's the SO4 combining with calcium, calcium sulfate. So that would be a substitution type of reaction and it's going to be a double substitution. Now, it's not an acid and a base, so it's not a neutralization. All right, we just analyzed that. Now, let's go back and look at how many atoms we have of each type on each side. Now, just looking at it, it looks like the calcium is already balanced. That's nice. All right. Let's look at uh, chlorine. I have two chlorine here, three chlorine there. That's probably a good starting point. A lot of times if you have something like that, a two on one side, three on the other, we're going to use those two numbers but switch them and make that the coefficients out front here. So what if I make this a three and make this a two? Now my chlorine is six, and over here I have six chlorine. Huh, what did that do to aluminum? Ooh, I have two aluminum here, and I have two aluminum here. All right, that looks pretty good so far. Let's see what happens to the sulfate ions. Here I have three of these SO4 ions. Over here I only have one of these sulfate ions. Here I have three calcium. Here I only have one calcium. I think I'm gonna stop right there or I'm gonna have solved the whole problem for you, all right? You finish it, go back and check all of them and make sure that they balance, and you'll feel good that you did have some fun balancing the equation.